SX, NCP supports uh, multiple platforms over here. Right? We start off supporting native Kubernetes, and since, since OpenShift uh, is based on Kubernetes, we very, very quickly can render the support for OpenShift. So it supports uh, both on VMs as well as on uh, bare metal. Okay? And why are we creating this NCP over here? So the whole idea is very simple. So if you look at the applications uh, owners, they, when they create apps, right, they create ports, they will require network objects, like for example, uh, firewalls, load balancers, net pools, and all this. So, um, but basically, if you, if, you, if you do not have any automation, you probably need to create tickets and you know, there's manual steps involved. So what we're trying to create here is to automate the whole process, right? So when the developers try to create ports or they try to develop, uh, deploy applications, NSXT will magically you know, create all the uh, network objects behind the scenes, right? So that was what we're trying to do here. And the whole objective is not to um, you know, affect the whole workflow of the developer. So let's take a look at what do I mean over here, right? So let me orient you on the diagram over here. So you can see that this is the management nodes. That's where you run vCenter as well as NSX over here, right? On the right-hand side, this is where we talk about the NSXT construct. So what you have here is a T0, T1. Don't worry about all this, right? In the layman term, this is basically virtual routers, right? Then what you have over here is the switches, right? You get a logical switch where you connect all the ports into. So when when the developer, let's say, for example, he deploys an application to create a, a port, you'll get a logical switch. So what NCP does, it will request IP subnet from NSXT manager and configure the switch with all these subnets. Then, of course, you need to connect to the router so that you can actually exit um, the logical switch, whether east, west, or north, south, to the rest of the systems. Right? With that, then the ports can communicate. So lots of photo over here. Okay, done. So basically, that's what uh, NCP does behind the scene. So what's NCP? NCP comprises of uh, many components. So by the whole idea, it's basically you want to translate Kubernetes resources into NSXT objects. It runs as a port, okay, and it's stateless. So every time when it startups you will take a look at what you have configured in Kubernetes, and if there's any gap, you will actually create all the objects as well, right? So for example, in OpenShift, we, when you create an object, basically it's a Kubernetes namespace. In NSX, we actually create a T1 router and configure a SNAP pool for it, right? You can also put in annotations if you doesn't want it to, to net. And if you are creating a port, you need to plumb uh, the container interface to it, that's what NCP will do. For network policies, that's where your developer writes, okay, this is how my apps communicate, and NCP will translate it into stateful firewalls in NSXT. That's what we call the distributed firewalls. Then we have, uh, then we have uh, ingress to the ports. Right? That's where you have, uh, you configure routes. Right? So you, in OpenShift, it's called routes, but basically it's a Kubernetes ingress. And what it does here, it's basically configure a load, layer 7 load balancer in NSX, right? and then put all the ports in the pool and configure a virtual, uh, virtual server for it. So that's what N NCP is do doing behind the scene. Last but not least, we, have the, we also support the service type load balancer. Right? So if you have layer 4 requirements for applications, that's where you create a service type load balancer. With that, NSXT will create a, a layer 4 load balancer with the respective virtual server as well as the pool comprises of the ports. Next, let's take a look at uh, what are the components. So you need all these components uh, to be up and running before you can start deploying the ports successfully. So NCP, you already know, right, is basically communicating to the API server as well as the Kubernetes server over here. Next, you have the NSX node agent. NSX node agent is also running as a port. And the main duty is getting port information, right? Remember things like IP address as well as MAC address for the container. 
that's where it pulls all the information from NSXT right down to this local control plane running. It's a local control plane running in the hypervisor. And what it does there is with the use of a, a VMK50 hyperbus, right, it will forward this information to the NSX node agent. Then it will plumb all this information of the port onto the open V switch. Right, I'll, talk about, I'll talk a bit about the open V switch later on. So that's what the role of an NSX node agent is for. Now, of course, we talk a bit about the CNI interface. So CNI interface, it's the interface between the kubelet and the node agent. Then we have the NSX cube proxy, just like what you have uh, in Kubernetes, the cube proxy. It translates the service, which is a cluster IP of the Kubernetes resources, onto the open V switch over here. Right? So that's what the cube proxy does. So cube proxy basically allows you to do load balancing of east-west traffic uh, in the open V switch. So uh, open V switch. Open vSwitch, it's basically the whole idea why we have open vSwitch in, in the node is we want to isolate uh, port traffic, right? Just like what we did for micro segmentation of VMs to VMs uh, in NSX. So let's now take a look at open vSwitch. So open vSwitch is shown here, right? As a, as a bridge interface, it's shown here. The blue objects here are the ports. Okay? So every port will configure a a local significant VLAN ID for it. And why we do that is basically we want to trunk the traffic out to the, to the node, to the hypervisor. That's where distributed firewall is running. So with that, we can apply the same distributed firewall method for port-to-port -port communication. So whether the port traffic is within the node or outside the node, we are able to do that. Likewise, port-to-VM traffic as well. So that's where, that's how we actually do distributed firewall for ports. And that's the whole reason why we have open vSwitch uh, running inside the node. Now, let's take a look at uh, where are all these components running. Right? So this is very important when, when you start deploying the uh, OpenShift uh, clusters and you know, if you integrate with NSX and things start failing, um, you know, probably have to do with NCP. If you want to troubleshoot, you need to know where are all these uh, components running. So we'll start with the NCP uh, over here. It's deployed as a port, okay? Since it's stateless and it's only a single instance is running, by deploying as a deployment, if the nodes fail, NCP will be restarted or being spun off in another node, right? So that's what NCP does. We have the NSX node agent. Again, it's deployed as a port. So and it's also configured as a daemon set. So when you configure a daemon set, what it means is that every time when you have a, a new node, the NSX node agent will be spun up, right? So you have NSX node agent running in all the nodes. Next, we have the OpenV switch, right? And the CNI. So both of these are deployed as packages in the, uh, the node itself, right? Not in the Kubernetes, Kubernetes resources. So you require the CNI and OpenV switch for, for every node. 